All right, Hamilton. Often the question has been asked, what do you do with a drunken sailor? You know another song? Oh, there we go. I can read the words. Well, today we're going to find out because joining us on the stage right now are stars of the upcoming Pirates of the Caribbean movie, Martin Kilmer and Adam Brown. Incident. Oh, incident. Okay, I'm like, accident. What do you know that I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Not or, involving 
go-karts. Yeah. That's unreasonable. That's not me. So, um, funniest incident. I mean, well, you've got to have some funny stories, Molly. Yeah, well, I mean, Johnny's quite a prankster. There's a, um, I I'd actually did a movie after the first Pirates where I, um, I was the lead character. I was a, uh, it was called Mihai P.I. You can find it on YouTube. It's broken down. It's like, it's really funny. But, um, I, I play a detective and, uh, you know. It's a good title. It's, it actually is a really funny thing, but there was a picture of me at one point, and it was the worst. I read the script, but I never thought about it. But I, had, I was supposed to be naked, and, um, I thought, Woo! oh, okay, the director would be just like, you know, they call it something sock. So I figured, well, I really won't be naked in front of the whole crew. And, you know, I, I was... I'm kind of worried about this. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is the comedy. There are children in the audience. Yeah, but this is the Comedy Central thing. Anyway, there's a, there's a, a sh you know, power I'm talking to uh, my former love interest, who's supposed to be a cop, this female. And I'm just standing there in a cowboy hat and um, some boots, motorcycle boots, and Woo! nothing else. But they, so they, you know, they throw out movies or TV shows, they take stills, you know, that's a lot of the things you guys see is like, us in action, we don't even realize that somebody's taking a picture because it's, you know, that's their publicity department. Well, um, so I'm standing with just like this, and all you see, see, you know, me from behind, and, um, well, somehow Johnny found out about it, and he had the picture, you know, taken off, and, uh, he had the lead makeup artist at the time was Joel Harlow, who's incredible, he's now on Star Trek, um, He's doing the Star Trek makeup. But somehow they took the female out that I was supposed to be talking to and they put in Johnny's driver. So there it is me standing naked in front of this really old man. And he happened to be like standing in a position where like, like, oh, uh, like, kind of like, kind of like this. <laughs> and they superimposed the, you know, so it looks like I'm, you know, getting ready to whatever. <laughs> And here this shit was up on the, on the mirrors in the, in the makeup. And so I get in my makeup chair and I look up and I see it. And it's plastered on everybody here. And, you know, that was a joke that Johnny played on me, so. Yeah. <laughs> to be able to work with somebody like Johnny is just, and the fact that they would sit and, you know, take time out from a lot of goop on you or whatever means that, you know, they're pretty down to earth, pretty kick ass guys. So, Woo. it's pretty cool. I also I had a custom made um, a chopper motorcycle I had built. It's nine feet long. You know, it's perfectly fit for me, and it's called the Black Pearl. <laughs> and uh, it's actually Johnny and I did a spread for it, and it's in um, two biker magazines, Easy Rider, and this other one, In the Wind. But on the gas tank is Johnny. Uh, or Captain Jack, the classic, you know, with the knives, uh, pose, and I had that airbrushed on there, and Johnny was blown away off by how realistic it looked, and he's like, hey man, you want me to sign that? And I was like, fucking hey, hell yeah, <laughs> you know? So anyway, I had to go and have it wet sanded, brought it back the next day, Johnny autographed it, and then I had it polished, and then put it back on the bike, and, and then Johnny did the, um, we did the, the magazine spread, it was, you know, a bike that cost me less than fifteen thousand to make, and I, I had an offer. For, somebody wanted to buy it for for fifty grand, but I was like, no, nah, no, it's That's nobody else in the world wants the bike. You know, it's kind of autographed by Johnny Depp. So I'm gonna learn from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a question for the bike. I want to hear some of your stories about the Hobbit. It's not about the Hobbit, Snobbit. <laughs> Go ahead, alright, go ahead. Any other questions? Do you actually drink rum? Like, do you like rum? I don't drink. Oh, I got drunk last night, though. <laughs> I didn't drink, but I got drunk last night. Yeah, well, typically, I'm not a drinker. Do I want like you guys in, in Australia? No, you're very sensible. Yeah, I just, I don't, I, I am there to make money so I can bring it home and take care of my family, keep it. Last night was a mixer thing that they had, I think, might have been involved. It was a this. free bar, basically. That's, yeah. that's what he's saying. So, my dumbass. It is free to drink it. Yeah. It's a and drinking it. Well, <laughs> it's got a cap on it. I'm not drinking just any of it. But I come here, and of course, I just drink a Budweiser. 
But then this, these people were there, and um, I drank the the guy had a this it was like purple Kool Aid or like soda or something, but it was sambuca, <laughs> lemonade, and a, a, a hint of raspberries, something. You, you know the poison, I can Jesus, was that good? I sucked that thing up. <laughs> Nobody been. Oh. So I gotta I gotta find out the name of that because I I want to be able to use it. What's that? It's called a jelly bean. Yeah. Oh, it's called a jelly bean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that. <laughs> a jelly bean. Why? You, you can change it up with different flavors. Is that what it is? Oh, all right. Well, I love jelly beans now. <laughs> so. Excuse me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What do you want? <laughs> Why do you stand up and... Take the marbles out of your mouth. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> right, I'm going to come down. You can whisper in my ear and then I'll go talk to it. Watch out, he didn't put the odor on out of it. <laughs> You got your money's worth. I mean, yes, you know, 
close to three hour movies, but if you're gonna go see a movie, don't you want your money's worth and you know, tons of action? Which one's your favorite? Yeah. Three. Uh, you probably like when I get shot back into the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. I'm, I'm one of the few actors who really does all his own stunts. And, uh, so, uh, thank you. And I got, on this one, they actually have uh, some stunt guys and uh, uh, doing some stuff. And there's one guy who kind of looks like me that they're having to do something. I can't really talk about it, but I don't really care because it's not that prevalent, so it's more of just basically a, a stand-in for me, or a photo double. But yeah, the, I love doing stunts. <laughs> my, big, my biggest stunt is sitting on his lap. Oh. We love that one. Oh. So do we. <laughs> uh, anything else? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, the Hobbit. The, 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 the <laughs> Hobbit. Go ahead. Yes. So, I mean, um, well, since we're talking about The Hobbit, did you see The Hobbit, Martin? No. <laughs> I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen a Harry Potter. I've never seen Star Trek. And Doctor Who. Did you watch Super Metro? Doctor Who, Jesus. The only thing I watch British, and I'll, I'll bow down to them, would be Monty Python. The Office. The original, the, the, the British Office is better than the American. Um, Did you watch Sherlock? Sherlock. Is that a British show? Yes. Is it on right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we even have something on in the States. It's a really right. super right. intelligent guy. And uh, I think Watson actually is... Uh, yeah, Elementary, yes, that's a good one. I love that, it's actually really good. good. Yeah. yeah. But no, I don't watch Philip. Like. Okay. I've never seen Star Trek. Okay. I've seen Pirates. But I haven't seen the fourth Pirates. Because <laughs> it's kind of a boycott. I mean, they, they didn't bring us back, so it's like, you know, <laughs> I'll see them like 10 bucks. Right, um, and, and um, sorry. It's a hard question, but what do you expect? Go ahead. Um, we heard that there was a terrible prank they pulled on you on the set that we got to expect in the third Hobbit Extended Editions. Is there something you can remember? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know. Maybe. <laughs> I can't remember. Well, Aww. that's a shame. Hopefully we're going to see it on the DVD because apparently it got really humiliated by the whole class. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We're going to make it Someone said the night of the Hobbit. Wait, 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 wait. I want to know what the thing is, so what is it? I don't know. That's why I'm asking him. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I am just humiliated every day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there are five minutes that you will never get back. Do we have a question about the Caribbean? Yes. Oh, Hello. Uh, first of all, I'm glad you like the drink. Uh, my second question is... Uh, Oh, sorry. My only question is, uh, how was filming the bone cage scene in the second movie? Oh, God. <laughs> I, uh, right now, I still wish Kevin was here because Kevin hated it. Um, it seemed like every location we went to, that damn bone cage showed up. I mean, you could, obviously, you could see we rolled all over the place. And, you know, they carried it a bunch of places and the swinging. I, you know, I, if you watch, there's a little... Um, uh, what do they call those things? Easter eggs on yeah. um, Pirates 2, and you, you can find it, but it's it's all about the bone cage thing, and um, it shows like me saying, you know, put it down, put it down, and you know, Gore was like, you know, bring it down, bring it down, and I jumped out of the thing and I ran, and I thought I was clear. I went behind the blue screen. Little did I know that, you know, one of the cameramen followed me the whole way, and then around here and it's like that morning I ate like four huge delicious brownies and drank like four purple Gatorades and it burnt <laughs> all came up and they were all laughing about it and it's on, you know, it's on one of those little Easter egg things on the, on the DVD but uh, the bone cage for me other than the swinging I loved it but that's because I didn't have to do anything I you know I sat there while they carried my weight <laughs> It was actually kind of fun. It was a pretty hard stunt. Like when we rolled up the uh, tree, you know, I'm, I'm in there with all these 
you know, stunt guys, and when they come landing down on you, it's, you know, there's always a chance of getting hurt. But, thank you. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna finish real that wa the bone cage, when it exploded down in the water, you remember when it breaks apart? That's when production shut down for a while because it, the water, the spring was so cold that we had cut off like uh, scuba suits underneath their costume that was supposed to keep us warm. Well, it wasn't, and somebody came up with the idea of just peeing in the water and was, you know, to warm that. Well, then Kevin, you know, some of the guys are having fun splashing each other, and I kept saying, don't, you know, I don't want to get pee in my ear or whatever. <laughs> sure as shit, that's why we got sent down, shut down for six weeks, because Kevin got an ear infection. <laughs> so, karma, baby, karma. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor to work with so far and why? Uh, go ahead. Go first. Go for some big ones. Uh, that's hard. Um, aside from this gentleman here. Please! <laughs> um, Ian McCann, I think, was, yeah, amazing to work with. Oh, Getting to work with somebody like a Jeffrey Rush, or an Ian McCown, or a Johnny Depp. Um, I'm old school, so my favorite actors are like uh, Jimmy Cagney, Jimmy Stewart, uh, Michael Landon, you know, some of the old, like the greats. So, but being able to work with Jeffrey Rush, and I mean, you're, you're, you're acting in you know, us, but I'm, it's like I'm at school because I'm learning. God, this guy is so like amazing. And the same thing, Johnny is, uh, you know, a lot of people give, you know, depth. Some of his movies don't always, aren't blockbusters. And I'm like, well, you know what? Johnny's great at being a character actor. So I think when he plays a straight guy, those are the ones that don't, you know, they don't kill the box office. But when Johnny's a character like Edward Scissorhands or Jack Sparrow or any other, it seems to knock it out of the park. So, again, getting to work with somebody like John who's... Fair and loathing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm a character actor, so I like, you know, working with character actors. <laughs> what else? Anyone? Pure? Pure? <laughs> Is that a question in the back there, or are you just reached? Yep. Yeah. Back, far left. Run, Catherine, run! Come on! Turn that hot dog! <laughs> Do you have any interesting audition stories? Uh, I hate auditioning. I'm terrible at auditioning. It's, it's the worst. Auditioning for Pirates or any, any movie? Um, my audition for The Hobbit was kind of interesting. I, uh, I, was, doing, I was in a comedy duo, a double act. And, um, you know, the thought of doing a movie wasn't really on the cards. I was very, very in the world of writing my own stuff. Yeah, yeah. And writing my own production, creating my own work, and touring. Um, in fact, we did a tour over here in 2005, and did the end of the festival. And my agent said, oh, I've got an audition for The Hobbit for you. And to which my response was like, oh, God, really? Well, what venues is it going to? You know, what's the... What, do I have to lift the set in and out every day? They're like, no, 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 this is not a theatre show. This is Peter Jackson's The Hobbit. Get to the audition. So I went to the audition and, <laughs> and, um, and I, read, uh, I read for Bilbo. And my audition was for Bilbo, and I'm clearly not a Bilbo. <laughs> You're pretty, pretty nice. Besides the hairy feet. And uh, yeah, I, I, I heard that it went well, and that was it. And then I got a call from my agent saying, about six weeks later, saying, you're not Bilbo, but the guys in New Zealand love you, and they think you'll be great for a dwarf. And of course, I hadn't really read the book. I hadn't read the book, so I was like, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> what is a dwarf? Is it villager number two? I don't know what it is. And so, yeah. It's just uh, one of those really random things that, you know, you just jump from things and something happened. How did this happen for you? Um, Pirates was a... Uh, oh, it's so weird. Actually, 
I was working on two other films at the time. I was doing um, this really bad Looney Tunes back in action. And at the same time, I was also doing Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy. And Disney at the time thought Haunted Mansion was going to be their, their huge blockbuster. And you know they put all this money into it, especially merchandise and all stuff. And one of the stunt guys was like, uh, that I was close with, he said, Hey, Marty, man. You gotta go down and audition for uh, doing a Pirates of the Caribbean. That's my, that's my uh, Mexican or whatever. <laughs> yeah, my game. Anyway, uh, so I'm like, oh, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of busy. He's like, no, oh, man, I think you should go down <laughs> and meet with George Rudy, the stunt coordinator. So anyway, I went home that day. I called and left a message with the stunt coordinator and um, this other guy, Tommy, who is now our fight choreographer on this, this particular film, you know, called back and said, you know, great, you're on, don't worry about it. I had no idea what the movie was about. And then, a uh, background, background casting agent called, and at the time, one of my best friends was living with me, another little guy, and him and another little person I know got, you know, a call to come down and audition for the movie. And here I am, like, well, I, I didn't even get the audition, what the hell? So I thought, I'm screwed. But I figured, okay, you know what, the stunt corner said I'm in, I mean, that's all that matters. So I went down, I drove them down, and um, they went up, you know, one at a time with a bunch of guys, because the audition was just kind of like a, a prop, improvisation, like, you know, what would you do? And the first thing Gore said is, I don't want to hear any eyes or any R's. So he made it very clear, I don't, that's not what I want, I don't want jokey, Stuff. So we had to be really menacing, whatever. Well, I was up downstairs, and you know, no plans to go up there at all. And by rights, I wasn't even—I I shouldn't even have went up there because if you're not asked to come to an audition, you're not supposed to go up or you know go in front of the thing. But um, the casting lady was downstairs, and she's like, you know, you're next. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I said I wasn't asked to go down here. I, I just came down. But she goes. She goes, no, I think you should go up. I'm like, no, no, I wasn't, at, you know. And I, it did kind of cause a little bit of a, a tiff because my buddy thought that I ended up stealing the job from him for Pirates because, you know, it ended up only being one little person and that was me. So, you know, there was, I would hear once in a while like, oh yeah, well you stole that job from Steve. And I'm like, no, actually I already had the phone call that I was gonna be in, you know, at least doing stunts, but, Needless to say, I got the role, and then we were maybe two weeks into shooting, and um, even though I was on a stunt contract, I was basically just, Jack's crew was just kind of background, and when I had heard that they were going to be going to the Caribbean, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to leave, you know, for a long time. So I tried to get out of it. I tried to say, you know what, I'm, I've got a principal role in these other movies, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to bail on it somehow, or, get killed off real quick. And uh, the council lady, Penny Rose, who's still with us, she, she had heard about it, and she went and talked to the director at night when we were doing dinner. And um, and she came back, and she goes, Bobsy, you're not leaving, you're, you know, they're gonna give you a principal contract also. So, needless to say, they're, I kinda got stuck doing Pirates, and <laughs> probably one of the best things that's ever happened. So, I do have to say, when I was booing earlier, I just, I give them, you know, a load of crap because my thing, you know, what most little people, what the hell is Peter Jackson, what, you know, does he not think Peter Dinklage or Warwick Davis or myself or some of these guys could play dwarfs? And I'm like, <laughs> it's one time it calls for a dwarf and you're casting it, you know, with advertise people and then have to go through this whole forced perspective shit, which <laughs> doesn't look right, like, because one minute Bilbo's this tall next to Gandalf, and the next though he's, you know, it's way small, it's like, it, it never made any sense to me. But I'm glad that this man got to work. And, <laughs> How can you say that? You don't watch the movie. <laughs> I, see, I see little parts of it, but I flip it through to go to like, you know, watch Disney stuff with my daughter. Or, I might catch a little bit, but... Well, my other thing is, like, look, Lord of the Rings would have been huge 
you didn't need Elijah Blue. I love Elijah Blue, but... <laughs> Who's Elijah Blue? <laughs> Who's the main guy? I'd love to see Elijah Blue. <laughs> about how much I know. But I'm saying, those people didn't go to the, to the movie because of Elijah Wood, right? It was because of the great story and the books and all that stuff. And so I, I was like, well, I don't understand why you couldn't have gotten four little people from around the world somewhere and shot this. And uh, So I, like, I'm not against it, I just, it's not my thing. And you know, if that means that this guy's working, that's cool. But, uh, I, my, my thing's more against Peter Jackson than it is the people that are actually doing the movies. So if I saw Peter Jackson, I would probably, like, spit his Cheerios or something. Uh, I'm sure he's spitting yours, too. Uh, yeah, he spit on us all. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Anyway, Elijah Blue, brilliant. Elijah Blue, who is it? He's a famous singer. It's somebody's kid, Elijah Blue. Oh, my God. Jesus. Elijah Blue or Elijah Wood? Elijah Wood. You no, no, no. I, you know who the hell Lauren Orlando Bloom is. <laughs> but Elijah Blue is in the That's Shea's son. Who is it? Shea. See? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Block, who is it on June with this guy? <laughs> anyway, next question. I think we should move on. Yeah. Here oh, you no, no, no. <laughs> You want me to leave? Elijah Blue. <laughs> Elijah Blue. I was actually to ask, um, you both have worked with Orlando Bloom because you are parents, uh, parents obviously, and you on the Hobbits. And I wanted to ask how your different experiences were with him. Uh, you go first. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> you're, you're digging yourself a little grave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Working with Orlando oh, oh, is a really funny guy. Um, I used to get my makeup done um, when I was with him, um, and then he was he had his makeup done on him. And at the time, he was also doing The Hobbit and learning incredible amounts of lines because he was just about to go to Broadway to do uh, Romeo and Juliet, which I saw. You saw? Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, so we, we were kind of test testing lines with him, and he's a really, really lovely, fun guy, and um, yeah, I've got nothing bad to say, lovely, lovely guy. I might, didn't have any scenes with him, or did I? I did have one scene, yes. <laughs> yes, I did. But, yes. <laughs> oh, your first meeting was good. Oh, my first meeting with him, yeah. yes. We won't go into that. <laughs> I love Orlando. Orlando's one of, he's, he's a, a man, he's a man's man or a boy's boy. Or I should say, he's one of the boys. So like, take from this, you're in the bone cage way up high, and you know, you're up there for a while, and you know, he's so like, just cool, and like, ah, oh, sorry dudes. And I'm like, well, what? He's like, I just farted, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not something you expect to hear from like, a huge A-list actor, but you know, I spent a lot of time with Orlando and, and his entourage. And at the time, he was going back and forth with Kate Botsworth, you know what I mean? Um, you know, he, he broke up, they got back together, this or that, but when he wasn't with her, man, we had some good times uh, in the city he went to. It's always good to be a, a click, you know? Scraps fall off the table, you're there to pick him up. Is it true he's gonna have a cameo? Is what? And the new one, I couldn't tell, I, I'm not allowed to say anything, and I don't know if there's anything formal or what, I mean, I know, I know Kira's not back. Uh, but our lips are sealed. Who? Our lips are sealed. Yeah, our lips are sealed. Together. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually filming another movie later on. Yeah. Uh, are there any jokesters or tricksters on set? Like, how there's a compilation of Martin Freeman flipping the bird to the camera a bunch of times? I always see that stuff. I mean, well, it's a Disney movie, so <laughs> not, not, obviously not going to make it on the... Um... Yeah, so rather than flicking the bird, we're literally going, Oh, it's birds, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's Disney, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's, uh, but yes, that, that stuff happens all the time. During the take, these guys—I gotta say, man—they 
Um, I'm not saying that they're not as good as Gore because they're doing great, incredible stuff, but they seem to get what they want, like, you know, right away, yeah. Like, let me see, it's like, the directors are boom, 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 like, we might do two, three takes, all right, moving on, and it's like, damn, I like it when it, you know, takes a day, or, you know, or two to do a full scene. No, I love working with these guys. Oh, they're great, they're great. But, Oh my I don't want to be going home too early. They're bang on it. They they know what they want and they've got a great yeah, great true. work ethic. Really nice guys. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess. I just like overtime, so it's all about my <laughs> Actually, I have a question for Marlon. Um, so Marlon, what was it that got you into acting in the first place? Oh, wow. Um, well, in, in, in uh, the States, you know, we have like you guys were. I was in uh, middle school, and before you went to high school, you kind of like, you know, put down the electives or whatever you thought you might want to do once you get to your freshman year in high school. And I thought, I was never a good student at anything. So I thought, oh, you know, blow off class. I'll at least something to help my grades. So I took drama, and the summer of eighth grade, going into ninth grade, that's when you kind of start to become a man, I guess you could say, you know, certain things were happening, and um, I found there, this certain thing that grows, and you know, we would have fun with it, and so anyway, I was, my, my group of guys, yeah, I was smoking weed, um, my group of guys, we were going down the wrong path, I mean, you know, we were on the way to school, during school, after school, seemed like we were always hungry, and um, Anyway, but I have we also connected with friends that I had seen since grade school and that were also going into the, they were in the theater part of it. So uh, my freshman year my drama teacher was doing Peter Pan. So my very first acting role was a pirate. She ended up casting me, even though I didn't audition, didn't want to audition, but I ended up being Smee, you know, Captain Oaks. Sidekick. So it's kind of funny that my very first acting thing, and here I am, you know, making a life out of being a pirate. <laughs> so, but it was actually good. It was actually good though because, you know, I got off that, that track. You know, I kind of saved me. Not that I was ever a good student, but at least I was, I found a career. And I thought it was going to be a safe question. <laughs> okay, we've got time for one last question. I've got you on right up here. Buck up, sissy pants. Uh, here it is, no pressure, make it a good one. With, the, with all the special effects that you've had in the movie, how much of the film has surprised you when you see it in the end? Well, with any movie, I, I would I assume, like, how much blue screen do you guys do on The Hobbit? <coughs> uh, green screen. Green, well, it doesn't matter. They can do any color nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, lots, lots. Yeah. yeah, loads, loads. And actually, I think... It is a surprise, and it's kind of going back to that theatre route. Like, people were really um, asking me at the beginning, oh, how did you cope doing, like, being an actor that works in theatre to suddenly in the movies? And I mean, I mean I'm, I'm incredibly lucky to have work, be working on two of the biggest franchises, which is incredible. Uh, but, I mean, in, in a sense, it's almost like doing a piece of theatre, because you are literally in a group, rather than a black studio doing a, a play, you're in a green studio doing a film. Um, you know, there isn't a dragon there. The ship is coming, but you can't, it's not actually there. They're gonna paint that in later. So you, as an actor, you're kind of, you know, using all that stuff that you would use in theater anyway. You're, you're kind of winging it you know, in a weird way, you know, but of, of course there's a dragon there. I, yeah, at that point there, there's a little mark on the green screen. Can you see that little mark? Oh, that's your dragon's eye line. Okay, yep, yeah, sure, got that. So you're kind of playing, you're doing the theatre thing, so uh, when you go and watch it in the cinema, it's, 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 it's like, well, oh my gosh, this is what we were doing. Oh right, that's what the dragon looks like. Oh, that's the black part. You know, it's, it's going to be like that, right? Yeah, well, I, I read, you know, I usually read the script once. You're supposed to. Um, but I always, I don't read it more than once, really. Other than like most actors, they go through and they want to see how many lines they got. Oh, I got 19, or this guy's got six, or I don't know, whatever. But I don't really, unless it has something to do with me, I try not to really imagine the rest of the movie. 
because I do love going to the premieres and then like sitting here and you're just like, whoa, like so cool. Like there's so much of stuff in pirates that when you're not working, you're at, you know, you're off golfing or doing whatever they had, you know, for activities. And to see what the other actors that are in the scenes that you're not and what they were going through and how it's all fits together and it's just it's math I mean, movies are magic, it really is. It's like I get totally blown away every single time I, you know. And this one's no different. So it's gonna be huge. Like Pirates Three when we were in the um in the first one we were out at water a lot. We were on the sea a lot. And they got less and less. And we were on the you know, for two and three, but the big, big battle scenes, we were uh, in an old airplane hangar in a city uh, called Palmdale, which is like 100 miles from the ocean. It's, it's just desert, but it was an old Air, for, Air Force base. They had these huge hangars, probably about 30 the size of this room. So we had two black pearls, uh, a Dutchman, um, and then we had the, the Chinese ship that we were on when we were over the edge. Well, all of that stuff was just nothing but a big green curtain around, and then we would be on the boats, but there was really no bottom of the boats because it was just a big metal gimbal that you know would simulate that we're you know on the sea or whatever. So that whole fight scene where we're in the maelstrom, they had uh, set up a sprinkler system above, like you wouldn't put out fire up here, but the water, you know, it was supposed to be our rain, so. The water wasn't getting warmed up enough, so that was really hard, like having to do these battle scenes, and it's kind of cold water, you know, sh coming down on you, and they got these 15 mile an hour fans blowing on you, and you're like, you know, trying to fight or whatever. But literally, we were inside of a studio, and, you know, nowhere near the ocean when it looked as, as incredible as it did. So, like I said, it's being part of Pirates is, he's very lucky because he's, and two, I'm only one of the biggest franchises, so you'll be sitting pretty later on. Like, <laughs> it's probably already sitting pretty, but... Right now, See you. And on that, Mom Show, Hamilton, show your appreciation. Right